We've got some really nice machines and we like spending money on nice new machines, but it's very easy to forget the less sexy dust extraction. But it is really important for your health and safety within the workshop. So I've got a few different setups here which I want to talk you through briefly. My main machines are set up to this style of extractor. This is a low pressure, high volume extractor. What we have in here is a large impeller or a large fan that's dragging an awful lot of air through the large diameter pipes. It's coming through, air is going through the top and being pushed out through the filter and all the rubbish and debris are dropping down into the two bags. The opposite to this is this much smaller extractor. This is a high pressure, low volume. One of the advantages of these is they're small and also we can use them for much finer filtration. So if we're using sanding machines or more portable kit. For this machine, it's nice and small, so it can sit under a router table top or a machine top. But we find actually it often doesn't have enough guts in it to really pull the dust away of the other machines we've got. And these are quite expensive. Pound for pound, dollar for dollar, I would rather spend my money on this style of standard extractor. Some of the things you need to look at if you are designing a system. Do you want your extractor inside your building or outside? Both has uh, advantages. Inside, it means I can instantly see if the bags are getting filled up and I can do any maintenance on the dust extraction as well. And by that, I mean tapping down the bags that I will show you. But what it does means any airborne dust from tapping down the bags or exchanging the bags is then airborne within the environment. If we have this system outside, any airborne dust is then just going away into the fields for us here. But it also means I can't see on a regular basis how filled up my bags are getting. It also means the noise that this is being uh, produced is actually going across and affecting our neighbours. Otherwise, inside, it's just affecting me. I can wear ear protection. My neighbours aren't quite so keen on doing that. Also, in the winter time, this is pulling a lot of air in my workshop. The hot air is just being recirculated within the workshop. But in the summertime, it means the heat off these motors and this hot air is remaining inside my workshop. If this was outside, it would drag all of the hot air out in the summertime, which is great. But the trouble in the wintertime, it could also just dump that hot air outside in the environment. So what you probably need to have really is a flow of air through a filtration system being put back into your workshop to maintain your heat within the workshop. But maybe you can divert that in the summertime to lose it. Some of the things we're looking for on these is a large diameter pipe when it comes off the machine. You want slow bends as much as possible and straight runs. As this comes down the workshop, this then divides into two extraction points. One that comes down to my table saw and one that carries on down to my surface planer. And what we have, we can use both machines at the same time, but if we're only using one machine, then we have a blast gate that we can close off. So now all the suction is going to the other machine. If we open this up, it won't pull quite as much off both machines, but it still is pulling enough. What you also need to look out for is try and minimise as much as possible the flexible hosing. The flexible hosing might be quite easy to set up. You know, you can just plug it in here, drag it across the floor to the extractor, but it really cuts down the flow rate and which will decrease how much dust and rubbish is being pulled away from your machines. You can also buy plastic ducting that perhaps you can get almost that would be soil pipe or waste pipe you might use for your underground water goods, but they can build up a lot of static electricity. So if you're going to use that style of pipe, it's a good idea to run maybe a copper cable inside the pipe and have that earthed. If static builds up, sparks build up, and you don't want sparks in your dust extraction bag because they will smolder and eventually cause a fire. Also, our dust extraction, any of our flexible pipes also have to be earthed and they're connected back to our dust extraction system. 
what we also have to have every year for us, because we are a commercial workshop or a teaching workshop, we have to have local exhaust ventilation checks, which basically means a specialist company come in and they will take flow rates and also the amount of uh, dust in our air. So I can pass on some of the tips that we've learned perhaps over the years for you in your small workshop, not that you need to comply to these regulations. But the guys will come in and they will drill holes, various test points within our dust extraction system, and they'll put flow indicators in here. We also have in our runner pipe work, a flow indicator that we can look at on a very, very regular basis. And I'm going to show you, if I turn my dust extractor on at the moment, it's probably going to be fluttering in this red side of this indicator. If I then turn the machine off and tap down the dust out of the dust bag I've got in here, it's either probably going to go right into the other red side or stay in the green. Really, it should be in the green when we know the dust extraction is working well. If I tap down the bag and it's not coming back into the green uh, location, it means the dust filter bag probably needs changing, or it could mean we've got blockages within the pipes because small bits of offcuts will get caught, particularly when you have a bend that's going to go up a wall, they can get caught up in there and that will really stop your flow of air. So every so often we need to get those opened up and clean those out. I'll turn this extractor bag on and we'll see what the flow indicator is giving us. I just need this to come back down and I'll tap it out. We have to change our bags normally every two or three years. If we have a brand new filter bag on this and we have our annual inspection, we tend to find when they come back the next year, actually the dust bag is improved after maybe a year's worth of use. I think the reason is the bag, when it's brand new, is almost too open. A lot of air comes out, which doesn't give you enough suction. As the bag starts to get a bit clogged up, it actually pulls better. And by probably year three, it's getting so clogged up, not enough air is escaping and it's time to get a new bag again. I'm gonna tap this bag down, not a bad idea to wear a dust mask, but we probably tap these down almost every day as we're using the machine. And this is the quickest way to improve the suction you're gonna get. And you'll see all the dust drop out into the bags below. I'll turn the indicator back on in a minute and you'll see it'll go to a different place altogether. Commercial dust extractors, when you turn them off, they go through a cycle themselves of shaking themselves down. So the big guys have got those automatically going into their machines. But I mean, do this on a regular basis and you'll be amazed how much extra comes out. What we'll also probably hear, it might actually pull bits out of the pipework that we didn't even know were there before. So what it's done, it's gone right in the other side of the red. At the moment, I've got one of my dust extraction gates closed and one open. We always must have at least one open. If you have them both closed and turn this on, there's a fair chance you'll blow one of the bags off and then we'll have just clouds of dust everywhere. If I turn this back on and open up the second extractor gate, you'll probably see now this will pop back into the green zone. And that's obviously the ideal. So we were too far in the red, now the other way. If I open them up now, we'll probably come somewhere within the green, I would think. So that's good news, it's done exactly as I was expecting it to. This bag obviously will begin to deteriorate again as it gets more and more clogged up. For you, you don't have to have a dial indicator, but only use one open gate. Knock down your bags on quite a regular basis and do look at probably changing them every year or three, depending on how much timber you're putting through the machine. Also, if I was cutting a lot of very fine MDF dust, then these bags would get clogged up quicker. As a general rule, 
if you're cutting or producing less than about 25% very, very fine MDF dust on a table saw, this style of bag is acceptable. If 50% or 30% or more of your cutting on your table saw is fine MDF dust, this style of bag is not going to be suitable and we need to replace this with more of a filter cartridge bag. But I'll show you one of those on another extractor I've got down the other end of the workshop. This is my dual drum sander and it produces a really fine dust. If I had my standard filter bag connected to this, it wouldn't last very long at all. It would soon get clogged up and it wouldn't draw the dust away. So we have it on a slightly different style of extractor. I've got this jet. This came with a standard filter bag, but we exchanged it for this cartridge style extractor. This is full of ribs. This will deal so much better with the fine dust, but also this needs to be cleaned out. I can't knock it down. So what we have is a paddle in here. If I flip the paddle around, the dust will drop down into the bottom bag. Use this style of extractor on your fine dusts. I wouldn't use this on a planer, and I'd only use this on something like a table saw, again, if I was doing probably more than 25% MDF or very, very fine dust cutting. Otherwise, your standard machines will work better on a standard bag. I think the key point, whether you're using standard bags, cartridges, or high pressure, low volume, the smaller extractors is get some form of extraction connected up to your machines. You must get the dust away at source. Don't rely on face masks. Face masks are only good when you're wearing them. And the fact is they get sweaty, they're uncomfortable, they steam up your glasses, and very soon you'll get bored of using them and leave them on the side. And they're doing no good at all for you on the side. Once this dust gets into your lungs, it doesn't come out again. So it's not exciting dust extraction, but it is really necessary for you to look after yourself in your workshop.